Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today you see two gameplays of mine, and this is um, one that I just played, and it is in the German Premium Leopard R1 R1 mit 120mm Rheinmetall Glattrohr Kanone. I know you like a bit of German here and there, so I hope you enjoy it. Now, the gameplay that you see in the background is just some random gameplay um, that I just played today just to try out things after this tank has seen a battle rating reduction. The second gameplay will in will be in the German cruiser, the KMS Emden. And those two German vehicles are representative in this case for a bigger issue called compression in the game. Or, uh, aka, how Gaijin handles um, balancing issues. So for tanks we can see that they are actually responding to compression problems with more compression. I find this hilarious and so should you. Now just to put things into perspective I made a tank review on this tank and it took me days to get the footage of some decent gameplay and it was not an enjoyable experience. In short I had to uh, deal with up tiers all the time and I had to face um, Abrams after Abrams after Abrams, even having difficulty getting the first shot off, not having uh, the comparable um, mobility and gun handling and all those things. So it was not enjoyable. And it's not just that it was a possibility to face an Abrams. No, it was certain. It was 80-90% of the games that I played were up tiers and um, I stated this in the tank review as the final verdict on the tank for me in the current state that it, um, how should I say it, yeah, is not recommendable because of those uh, up tier problems. And um, so I think this was a fair verdict. What would have been the solution for me at this point, as seen from the Germans and also the Russians and some other nations with 9.0 tanks and uh, 9.3, 9.7? Well, get those top performing dogs, the, um, well, the Abrams Type 90 and so forth, get them to a different battle rating, decompress top tier. Battle rating 11, preferably 12, would have been the desired thing. And then you could have put this thing at, let's say, battle rating um, 10.7, okay? So that it doesn't still face top tier, but it also doesn't really um, bring more compression to the game. This would have been my solution, and I guess the majority of people would agree. And it's also, you know, coming um, at some or it, it comes with some tradition now just to explain you the battle rating system the battle rating system by itself is fine there is nothing wrong with it it's just the way how Gaijin handles it which is a problem and um, that ultimately is how we have to address it I don't think that the reintroduction of the 20 tier system would bring any benefit with it I think it would be even a bad thing because some people still brag on about this the battle rating system is fine. So currently what we have is from battle rating 1.0 to battle rating 10. And for the German tech tree we begin with the Panzer 2 um, Ausführung F and the C variant as a reserve. And then up to battle rating 7.7 .7, we have the time span from the first tanks that we have in War Thunder till the end of the Second World War with the Maus and um, in my case also the E100. And then with 7.7 .7, we go up to 10.0 with a battle rating spread not of 6.7 but of 2.3 and we just have like a third or a quarter of the time span. Of course there are so many more technologies that make a difference. From, from 1.0 to 6.7, it's mostly all about getting thicker armor, getting angled armor, getting bigger guns, getting, um, you know, better ammunition. But then it really escalates, you know, at 7.7, uh, .7, even beginning with 6.7, talking here about the Brits, we see the introduction of APDS, stabilizers, then at later battle ratings APFSDS, ATGMs, and um, 
autoloaders together then with also helicopters and you name it. And this should fit into a battle rating spread of roughly 3. Of course there are massive, massive jumps in technology and therefore massive jumps in, in, in performance and therefore big differences in um, balance between the nations. And so we should address this. Now there are people that argue with, oh, but there are not that many vehicles in the game to fill the battle rating and to fill the lineups. And my answer is, so what? Okay, let me recap this. There are currently 1,176 vehicles that I own, that I have in my hangar. Helicopters, ships, planes, tanks. With the remaining one um, clocking out at just over 1,200 vehicles that I think are actually in the game. Okay, so there is that. Now, what we have to look at is um, the simple fact is that just a fraction of those vehicles, ships, planes, helicopters and so forth, ruin the day for everybody else. And I don't like the fact that the huge variety of vehicle vehicle classes that we have in the game gets ruined by just a handful of uh, vehicles that are at the wrong battle rating or suffer from compression. Now to put the things into context, there is a technolo uh, technological gap between the um, this tank, the L44, but also the Abrams. No doubt about this. Composite armor, ba uh, mobility, better stabilizer, you name it. So obviously the Leopard needs a lower battle rating and you have a tough time dealing with the Abrams. But, it's, it's, but it is an absolute joke, a ridiculous joke, letting an Ice 4 fight this thing. This is not good. And now the Russians are on the receiving end. And some people point out, ah, now the Russians get what they deserve for their former Russian buyers. This is the wrong way to talk about War Thunder. Okay? This is the absolute wrong way to see the game. Oh, now I have suffered at the hands of this nation because clearly they were biased and whatnot. And now I get a new tank and now I can dominate them. And this is fair. No, it is not. I want fairness and I want fun and I want performance um, on equal terms for each nation. And there is still enough flavor for all of them to, you know, make a distinct um, nation feeling. So in my opinion, the answer to compression is not more compression like Gaijin does it, but decompression. And we urgently need it. And this is, in my opinion, what um, ruins the fun for many people. It certainly does for me. So we need a decompression at top tier. There are the facts, there are the numbers, and there are um, the people that I talk to that agree. Okay, And so if we need a decompression, and we need some more vehicles, I think Gaijin is bringing in new vehicles, but with the next patch, they are piling them on top, and I don't think that this will lead to decompression. Now let's have a look at some other gameplay, this time in the German light cruiser, the KMS Emden. And what the essence of criticism is can be seen here. I just spawned and I have an entire enemy destroyer flotilla to shoot at in a light cruiser that excels at shooting up destroyers at close quarters. I am thrown into my dream and the enemy is, uh, you know, thrown into a nightmare. The problem is there is an island, um, so they actually can run for their life, or at least they can try. But even then I will, I will get in the juicy hits and um, that protects me in this case from getting torpedoed while I can shoot them up. And also I control here um, the objective, which is B. Furthermore, I'm closer now to A, which is the PT boat area. And so I can actually, um, in this case, on this map, fight over some of the cover without uh, ever being in danger of getting torpedoed. And the only hard counter for me might be planes, but planes are always a bit of a problem. Um, the suicide torpedo bombers, the suicide bombers, um, the guys that just throw around Fritz X and such. So yeah, it's, it's, it's um, this rock, paper, scissor system. 
it's debatable, okay? And as you can see, the enemy destroyers have a lot of fun. <clears throat> yeah, there is a lot of party going on inside um, of their ships. They lose crew, they lose the modules, they're dead in the water, they're return fire. I mean, sometimes they don't even try because it's an empty, you know, turtle back armor. What else you need to know? Um, and base fuse HE on top of this from um, overall eight 5.9 inch guns yeah much fun <laughs> so while the gameplay is running in the background let's put this thing into perspective while this is a point of criticism there are ships that are a problem that are overall overperforming i criticized some of them but overall i think the biggest point of criticism ever was the map design because I think if the map design ever should change, which hopefully will be the case, and also the game modes would change, and no, this break new game mode is just a recycling of something uh, very old. Um, and it's also just around capture zones. It's just a reorganization of capture zones. So, debatable. But back to the topic. Why the cam is, is such a hilarious case of failed balance, or let's say failed answer. What I criticized about the cam is Empton was actually um, first the high repair price. It's just short of 40,000 silver lines. And I discussed in a previous video that, um, you know, repair costs don't balance at all. I don't think that this is in, in any way, shape or form an answer to um, balancing problems um, especially if a player is only interested in seal clubbing doesn't really invest in grinding and just wants a high k to death uh, kill to death ratio he goes for certain ships like we can see here the type 140 141 aka the jaguar which got rebalanced by a pr206 so on, so in order to counter an overpowered ship you need another overpowered ship yeah this is kind of how balance is done the gaijin way and I'm saying this uh, not an in, in an insulting way, I'm saying this by looking at the footage. So next to the repair cost, there was also previously the fact that you had nothing to shoot. That you had nothing to shoot in the, the previous uh, games where you spawn on the far spawn and had to drive to the or sail to the spawn zone, not to the spawn zone, to the capture zone. I always mix up those two words. And that took 10 minutes and you had nothing to shoot. Occasionally a destroyer at 10 kilometers, but that was not really a viable option, was it? And so um, the experience in the Empton was really, really discussable. And Gaijin's answer to those problems was not the long way, the difficult way, the potentially expensive way of um, doing the map design differently, of doing things better, of looking at the essential problems and trying to do anything about it. No, they allowed the KMS Empton to now officially seal club the living hell out of PT boats, destroyers, and um, if you're good, also enemy cruisers. Now, the KMS Empton is not undefeatable. Um, you can get a lucky strike on the torpedo tubes or you can still ammo rack it with APCBC rounds um, if you know what you're doing. But overall, it's just a ship that excels at close quarters. It has the armor, it has the firepower, it has the survivability. And um, then funnily enough, people undoubtedly will argue that planes are the answer. You have to get killed in order to get into a plane. And you need to have done something before you actually have the spawn points. So I agree planes are this ship's greatest weakness because it does have not the strongest uh, anti-aircraft arrangement. It does not have um, any sort of proximity fuse um, heavy um, anti-aircraft batteries like all the other ships. And so, yeah, to get torpedo bomb from a uh, from a BTD one, or to get Fritz X from a Heinkel one seven seven one seven seven or the Heinkel one eleven, that's not really fun. And especially because you can't really do anything against it, you cannot really counter it. 
But meanwhile, when this is, you know, ship realistic battle, it's more of planes being necessary to bring in balance. Now, what ultimately is, is the hilarious thing is that Gaijin's answer was to really let this light cruiser spawn with, uh, with these destroyers. It's hilarious. I'm sorry about this, but what the hell? What the hell? And uh, I, I know that it is still a beta. I know that it is a work in progress and many changes will happen. And um, that Gaichi needs to collect their stats and facts. But I can tell you that this ship must not fight patrol boats. Like a lot of the other destroyers, they have no business fighting patrol boats. And to leave the enemy ships no choice to give them no opportunity to make a smart gameplay but just die this is bad <laughs> I have no other word for this this can't be the answer this cannot be Gaijin's true intention and it's true for the other light cruisers as well Obviously, for them, it's not so um, obvious because their guns can be easily disabled and um, they don't have the turtle back, so they need to angle. Um, but with all the other light cruisers, effectively, it's the same, okay? They just will obliterate destroyers. Yes and no, it is what they are built for. But with that argument, I have to ask you one question. Why can a Tiger 1 not fight a normal Sherman because he would be underpowered the Sherman that is but the Chumbo Sherman it is practically indestructible from the front for the tiger or from the tiger's perspective okay so do you see here the kind of problem in terms of balance overdoing it in fear of making one ship or one class overpowered and then answering it with bringing an overpowered counter to a something very strong or overpowered the balance in war thunder is a great great mess and there are attempts to do something about it at the hands of gaijin the player base has a true uh, interest in it and um the problem is that sometimes Gaijin is making it worse. And to give here you this example, currently the light cruisers are the biggest ships in the game. They are the point of desire. But in the interest of the dozens of destroyers that there are in the game, I would say give it back in its old spawn. Yes, the gameplay would be boring. Yes, then you get suicided by planes before you can do anything about it. But I'd rather sacrifice four ships rather than dozens of ships. That is my opinion. If Gaijin cannot bring balance to the game because they, they think it's too expensive to think about a problem, then I'm sorry. I don't hate your own Gaijin. I don't rant about Gaijin. But we have the same old problems years after years after years from patch to patch to patch it's all the same over and over again please do something about it guys you're the guys that are in charge of this game and the game has much potential you know for glorious game modes for fun battles for engaging game mechanics you know detonation and such um but jokes aside this is not the way to do it. If I would be purely a uh, KMS Empton captain, I'd be upset by those recommendations or by those uh, desired changes because I then can no longer seal club it. But I tell you what, do you think that the eight ships that I just destroyed think, yeah, you know, let's, let's give him the kills. He fought well because he has those high repair costs. I don't think any player ever serious thought that this is a good balancing attempt. So that's all that I have to say for today. Let's have a look at the post battle results. 
And there we have it. So for our 8 kills, 3 assists, no caps and no planes, we got 43,000, 44,000 silver lines and 4,454 modification research points together with a survivor award. Yeah, this is the KMS Empton in a nutshell, um, being first with nearly 2,000 score points and over 14,000 ship damage. I think I've done well. That's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Let me know your thoughts on this topic. Share this with your friends so that this topic gets attention if you're truly interested in getting this fixed. And um, yeah, give this video a like if it did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.